Everyone, I am super excited. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Millionaire Network Marketer podcast and show. Today we have Kate McShay with us. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much, Lisa. So excited to be on here and so grateful that you have me. Thank you. So you have really developed your own seven-figure brand, but initially you started in network marketing. And you know, at one point you were kind of at a place that you were kind of treating it like a hobby business, which we'll get into because a lot of people do the same thing. They don't treat it like a seven figure business. And so they're getting 10 cent results. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want you to introduce yourself to us and then we'll go into your story a little bit further. Yeah, sure. So, um, so now I, I like to say that I'm a home-based business owner myself and I specialize in teaching other home-based business owners how to utilize especially video marketing and social media to build their businesses. That's what I am now. However, if I were to introduce myself just about three and a half years ago, four years ago, I would have said I was a, an ex-second grade teacher who had just relocated <laughs> across the country and who was looking to build a home business and build a brand online. And, um, and really, really struggled with that. And I know we're going to get into the story a little bit. However, I got mentorship and I also learned a strategy that I really loved and started using my teaching skills to go from zero to six figures in less than 12 months inside of my home business. Um, and then, you know, obviously results have gone on from there. Now we're, uh, we'll be doing a seven figure year this year. So amazing things have happened for us. I know, very exciting, <laughs> but very, very exciting, uh, almost surreal. I was doing the math. It would take us, it would take me about 55 years to do what we're projected to do this year. If I wow. stayed in the educational space, which I love teaching. Um, it's just, this has allowed me to create more exposure and impact more people in a shorter amount of time. So I think that's, that's basically how I like to share who I am and what I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, I would love to get into kind of the journey and the story of what it really took to get from absolute scratch. So if you're watching this and you're at absolute scratch, I know how you feel, um, to getting into a business that's really thriving and is something that you're passionate about and that you truly, truly love. I think that's an awesome story because you are still doing what you're passionate about. You're just teaching in a different way. So you went from, you know, maybe making $30,000 a year doing teaching and really loving what you do, but just realizing that there's other resources out there that you can teach on a bigger platform. And, you know, people will pay for that knowledge because they need the information so badly. And with um, marketing and the resources that we have available, opportunities open. Yes. So it's just, let's learn the skill set apply it. And, and so we'll go from there. So yeah. you were sitting at a conference mm -hmm. in 2013 and you were like, huh, we're at this conference. We're not making the money that we want to. We spent all this money coming to a conference and how do I make this a business? Like you're hearing these rock stars who are just totally crushing their business and we've all been that person if you're in network marketing or if you're in real estate or if you're in any sort of marketing at all, uh, you've probably have gone to the conference and you've been the person sitting there like, that sounds nice, <laughs> but I'm not having those results. Take me to that moment. Yeah, uh, man, I'll never forget that moment because I had been running our business for 12 months at that time. I had left my teaching job in June with no plan B. And was literally, we moved, we, I relocated up to New York at that time. Later on that year, we moved across the country to Portland, Oregon. And so no, I didn't know anybody. And I was trying to figure out how to build a business when I had never built a business before. And I allowed myself to get into such paralysis by analysis and so into my head, the things that I was saying throughout those 12 months that brought me to that day at that event was, well, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a business owner. My husband, Andrew, is really, really good at sales. I'm not. Um, I don't sound like all these amazing recruiters out there. I, I can't do these things. And what I did is I created a space of 
not being able to do those things. Mm -hmm. And I also was coming from a place of like total, just being completely inauthentic. Um, and I thought I had to, and I know we talked about this, had to dress a certain way. My hair had to be done perfectly. I needed to, to sound like a master saleswoman, um, like a killer closer. And it was so inauthentic that when we got to that event, and I had been to a couple of other events before that, um, and this is what I realized when I was sitting in my seat and I was watching all these amazing people speak up on stage and I had done other things in my life that I had considered successful, right? Mm -hmm. Successful teacher. I know, you know, successful wife, um, athlete, all those things. And I finally connected that I didn't want to meet another one of, um, like my upline was there at that time. Um, some other mentors, some people that I really looked up to were at that event and it was the third time I had to go up to them and they said, how are you doing? And I had to give excuses for why I wasn't getting results. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was not okay. Like I did not want to be that person that was spending years and years and years giving into my excuses when I knew that I could be bigger and more powerful. Um, and for, for, for most people, you have to get to some sort of space of either like anger um, sadness, fear, uh, passion in order to really make a choice. And mm -hmm. for my husband and I at that event, we we're sitting in the front row. Um, and we had already heard some of the speakers speak. It was on topics that we already knew about. We just didn't execute. And we went to a place of anger for me. It was a place of anger of, I should be doing better than I'm doing and I'm not executing. I know enough. <laughs> I have the knowledge I need. Um, even after just 12 months of, of literally starting from scratch, I knew everything I needed to run a successful business. I just wasn't executing. And uh, what we ended up doing is we locked ourselves in a room, in our hotel room. We had paid for like an upgrade um, for networking parties and everything. We skipped all of them and we mapped out a 90 day action plan. Cause that's what was missing is, um, is like you said, we were treating our business like a hobby. I would work on it some days. I wouldn't work on it other days. I would give myself excuses to not have to um, take action. And I would give in to everything that was going on in my mind. And I never had an effective plan. So we mapped out a 90-day action plan um, and then went home, started taking consistent action, and then realized, and this is a big suggestion if you want to like really run hard, Take whatever is your 90 day action plan and put it into 30. Ooh. There's a good chance that what we all do is we set something up that probably doesn't need to take as much time as it is it as we think it does. So we took our 90 day action plan, chunked it into 30 days, and then we actually did most of the work over a three day weekend over Memorial Day. We said bye bye to the burgers and all the barbecues and uh, just focused on our business. And literally, that's what created the momentum for the next 90 days where we were going from probably like $500 negative in our bank account for our business each month to um, almost to replacing my salary, my monthly salary in two months and then doubling it that next month. And then it continued to go on and on and on from there. Wow. Yeah. That's what can happen in a weekend. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Like in an instant, right? Putting yourself around all of these other people, that's literally what can happen in a weekend. Mm -hmm. That one choice. Yep. And, and it's a choice. You know, yeah. you had the knowledge. Um, you had excuses. A lot of us have that. In the beginning or even wavering times, I think around the time of conferences, people leave there on 10 and they're like, yeah, I can crush this thing, you know? And then you just come off of that high, you're no longer around those people, um, and you hit a few no's, yep. you know, you hit a few walls, and it's hard to press, you know, press forward. Yeah. So um, what did your 90 day plan that condensed down into 30 kind of look like? Yeah. Great question. Because I think that what you just said about people are so fired up at the end of an event. Um, and truly it, it, it's not like just fired up with, you know, a faulty reason. It's truly that belief that you can do it right. and it is. And, but then you get home and life happens. 
life starts to take over, it's not just your business from 6 a.m. to midnight. It's not. And so what we did is we did something that we do now for everything that we build out, whether it's a product, whether it's bringing in, um, you know, a bunch of new customers, whatever it is, we always go backwards to move forwards. And so when we built out that 90 day action plan, the good news was we had taken some sort of inconsistent action <laughs> <laughs> and uh, video marketing in December of that year was what we had made a choice on, like, that's what we were going to focus on. Now, for the next six months, we did some video marketing, some blogging, some Facebook advertising, some social media prospecting. We were all over the map. However, um, I realized that I really resonated with video because I'm an educator. And so I felt like it was like having a conversation with people. It was a way I could teach and train people. And so we had, I think, about two videos, maybe three videos that were generating maybe one to two leads per day. Mm -hmm. We took in some kind of action. So we went, all right, if these videos are generating one to two leads per day and we wanted to get up to, you know, 25 leads per day and then at some point 50 leads per day, what would we, how many videos would we have to create in mm -hmm. order to hit that number? And, and so what we did is we literally went, okay, so we would have to create about 30 videos. And that's what we would have to do. And so literally our whole strategy was revolved around, okay, which videos have brought in the most prospects and the most hot leads and how can we create a very similar format and a similar formula to all the other videos we do without them being completely repetitive mm -hmm. um, to make it easy to shoot. So it's not like we have to come up with this brand new content every single time and it's gotta be life changing and amazing. It was we went through a very specific formula in our videos and then just thought about like a new tip that we would talk about. And so our goal was in that 90 days that we would do 30 videos in 90 days. So then that would get us a gradual 25 to 50 leads um, about 90 days later. Uh, what we did is we <laughs> cut that goal. I actually went to another live event. And this was, this was another actual critical point of our 90-day thing was back in 2013, I made a commitment to get to as many live events as I possibly could, even if I was eating granola bars out of my suitcase. Like I knew that's where my breakthroughs happened. And if I could have as many live events set up in between those months that I wouldn't get that, that lag time of you get back into your ways and then you got to go to another event six months later. So I had one almost every other month. Mm -hmm. So I had one month missing. Then I had the next event and I went, you know what? We've been, I've been doing like two videos a week. This is almost too easy. I need to condense the time and then Memorial Day weekend was coming up and we just said, what if we did 10 videos a day? It's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be a lot. But what if we just did all the videos, got them done um, and then just gradually released them online? Like we had all of our content set up and then we would release those two or three videos rather than me having to take a shower, get dressed, put my makeup on every day. Mm -hmm. come up with content. And so we did, I like to call it video blitzing. And it's what I tell a lot of my students is pick a day, shoot five to 10 videos in a day. And what happens is you kind of get on a roll. So by the second or third video, I was like all set, ready to go, <laughs> like firing them off. I would change my shirt, go grab another one, put on another shirt. And then before you know it, we just started to watch the leads roll in because we had taken all the action. We had created almost like a snowball of momentum and then it just kept building and building and building. And those videos actually um, generate us leads for about the next two and a half years. Wow. <laughs> so that's what's crazy when you make that one commitment of think about it. How many of you guys that are on here that are listening or watching would take just three days. It take massive action so that you're all set up for your next 90 day period. And then you have stuff that continues to create that momentum as you continue to move forward in your business. I mean, it's a no brainer, right? It's just taking that step forward and doing it. Yeah. 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 Um, that's amazing. You know, just the <laughs> amount of action step that you did, um, just actually like locking yourselves into the house and like, look, like we're not leaving until we get this done. Yeah. Um, and it takes that, you know, um, it takes that commitment. So at that time, were you, um, 
just promoting a affiliate or were you also in a network marketing company that these leads were, you know, helping out with that as well? Yeah, good question. So they were, I was promoting two different things. So I was promoting an affiliate marketing system that taught marketing. And then I also was a part of a network marketing company at that time. Um, because I really loved the team that I was with. I loved the community that they had and I really believed in the product and I believed in my upline. They were absolutely amazing. Um, and so what I did is I did a lot of training that revolved around what I was learning in this marketing system. And then I would sell a little mini product of theirs. I think it was, gosh, at that time, I think it was like $10. Mm -hmm. And then what I would do is I would get on the phone with every single customer and talk to them and wow. ask about what their pains and struggles were. And then I would bring them into my network marketing company. Or if they were like um, network marketers and they loved everything about their company and everything, then I wouldn't even go near it. And I would say, hey, well, maybe if you want to learn how to prospect online, I've got this amazing course. And then I would sell them into another course. But, oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's the method of kind of what we did in order to um, start to, yeah, in the beginning, I was on the phone every single day. I had, it was called the 20 penny game for me. I was petrified of the phone, um, <laughs> petrified. And uh, I would take 20 pennies and I would line them up into two rows of 10 on the left side. And in the beginning it was, I would call, if I picked up the phone and I dialed a number, I would move a penny to the other side. <laughs> and that's awesome. <laughs> and then it turned into, if I picked up the phone and it started to ring, then I would move it to the other side. And then it was you know, obviously moved forward from there. So, and then I got to the point of where it was, I had to have 20 people pick up mm -hmm. and then, and then I would move it to the other side. So, yeah. so without even um, a scheduled call or anything like that from the people that purchased this $10 low entry program, you just yep. kind of picked up the phone. And you're like, Hey, yep, exactly. I would do that. And then some of the, um, the capture pages that we had, um, also had phone numbers in at that time. So we had included phone numbers. So sometimes I wouldn't even call customers. I would just call like leads. Um, literally I would get their phone number and it would, that would be my job for like an hour a day is I would just pick up the phone and I would dial and I was terrible at it in the beginning. Really, really bad. Um, <laughs> until I just realized that for me, the biggest thing I needed to do was be authentic Mm -hmm. be vulnerable with what I was struggling with and then offer out a solution that I found that might be helpful to them. And mm -hmm. then just listen to other people and how they did stuff and take what worked for some people, try it out and then see if it worked. And if it worked for me, I might add a little spin to it, to my personality. Mm -hmm. um, but I just became a really good referrer. Like, you know, like a good friend refers um, movies to somebody or refers that you don't go see a movie. I just became like that where it was kind of like, well, what do you need help with? Let me see how I can help. Okay, let me give you some advice. And then would you ever be open to checking this out? That is so yeah. awesome because it's so authentic. And yeah. um, instead of being this pitchy, salesy, done up, <laughs> made up, yep. um, everything that you're not, yeah, you got to – Get past your fear at the same time as failing forward. Like I'm sure your first 20 pennies phone calls were just like, you know, okay. Or so I didn't bad. even make sense of anything, but I talked to some people. Or people would answer and I would hang up. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. They would answer and I would hang up. Um, or they would ask a question. I wouldn't know what to do. And I would hang up. So, I mean, if you were to ask me of <laughs> all the things you can do wrong, I've probably done every single one of them, but it helped me grow. And I think the biggest thing is that what I started to do is the moment I started to share in my videos, I started to share on the phone. Um, my previous experience of like, Hey, I'm just a previous second grade teacher. Um, it changed things for me versus me being that person who wasn't authentic. Like there were a lot of people I talked to on the phone that were like, Oh yeah, well I'm a mom and I just want to stay home with my kids. And so then I had an option for them mm -hmm. versus trying to be, like you said, this person who knows everything about their company knows all these different things. I just gave people, I just pointed people to tools. That's all yeah. I did. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. Um, and it, what a more genuine relationship than it is to just like slowly nurture people over a length of time and 
have them try to get to know you and stuff like that. So now with technology, like Zoom calls and things like that, do you use that instead of, would you use that instead of dialing yeah. up? Great question. I actually have a lot of students that do that now and have mm -hmm. a ton of success. So if it were me and I could go back, yeah, I would totally do um, Zoom calls or Skype. Um, Zoom, I think, is the best. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like Zoom the best is I just feel like it has the best functionality. I don't see like there's too many different um, losses of uh, service or anything like that. Plus, you get to share your screen. And mm -hmm. I think that's so powerful because what I used to do is I got the tip to stay on the phone and walk people through entering in a link and then tell them, okay, you're going to see this and it's bright colored on this side and it says this on that side. But instead, you literally get to share your screen and mm -hmm. you get to walk people through the visual. Um, one thing that I've learned about the sales process that's really helped us um, close anything from people into our team to um, going to live events to buying higher ticket stuff uh, where they do workshops is when you're walking them through the sales process, and most people won't do this, is you're literally showing them what to expect each and mm -hmm. every single step. So Zoom calls for me, I think would be absolutely amazing. Um, not only because of that, because you actually get to walk them through a process with you, but they also get to see you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's right there. You become a person to that person when they actually get a chance to be like, oh, they're normal and they're real. They're not all dressed up in a suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're just a regular person like me. And the part that I like about that is that in their mind, especially if it's network marketing, they're going, I could do this. Yeah. And it's huge. And so anything that we've ever done in our business, just knowing the kind of people that we attract, it's always done with the intention of, could someone else duplicate what we do? And if they couldn't, how can we make it so that someone would feel confident that they could actually do it? That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So going back to your story, one year later, you had generated over 30,000 leads. Yep. Signed up over 937 members into your home business. And so that was the network marketing company and the affiliate company you were with. Yep. Yeah. Mix of both. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. So it <laughs> yeah. created multiple six figures for you. Yep. So that's just in a 12 month period of time. So that's what massive action. Um, I love the condensing of mm. the 90 day plan into 30. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. Totally huge. And I think that that is one of the biggest things that I would say is that most of us don't know what we're fully capable of. Right. And what we can fully do. And just taking on that challenge of I can do anything in 30 days or I can stick with anything for three days, which that's what most people do. They stick with things for a couple of days and then they move on. So looking at it from that direction of I'm going to do it. I'm going to be as big as possible. And I know that this is going to pay off. Just mm -hmm. having that belief that it's going to happen. And it is. It's blind faith that it's going to happen. Um, but just doing it sooner rather than later. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> we all want to get to that exactly. space sooner rather than later. <laughs> exactly. It's like you have the, you end up developing the success tools as you're failing forward. Yep. And then just scale it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> once, you, once you're like, okay, this was deplorable and this worked. Yes. So where do we land in the middle of that? Yes, exactly. That's, I think the biggest thing is that you learn very, very quickly what doesn't work. Um, because about 95% of it is probably not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's just whether, whether you'd like to do it over a six month period or a 30 day period and find out really fast that it's like, ah, that didn't work. Now you have five months to figure out what you need to do differently in order to make an impact. Well, I think that's good that we have your numbers of like within that year, you generated 30,000 leads and 937 yeah. signed up. So, I mean, people yep. would think like, Oh, she has 30,000 leads. She must have like 20,000 right. people signing up. But really you have to realize there's an ROI there. Like the yep. return on the investment from getting the leads. Yep. You placed ads on a video, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. We did actually at that time it was free organic YouTube advertising. Mm -hmm. However, it took time for those to, you would rank them on Google and on YouTube. Um, and it would take time. And so the difference is our investment, um, really was an investment of time versus advertising spend. If I were to go back, would totally do it through paid advertising. 
you, yeah. we probably could have gotten bigger, faster results if we had actually done it through paid advertising. Um, and it would have taken less time for us to get those kind of results. No what platform would you have used? Uh, Facebook. Yeah. I would have totally used Facebook. Um, I was afraid to use Facebook at that time because I was afraid of paid advertising. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't think of it as utilizing it for data. So everything that I did was um, collecting information and collecting information about my people. So if I wasn't generating leads from an ad, it wasn't because I was doing everything wrong. There was a breakdown in my process. And now that we've built up a really big following on Facebook, I mean, it, there's just no doubt in my mind that it's, it's possibly the biggest, most influential platform out there. And it's not um, running dry, like a lot of people think. <laughs> it's when you build up a presence of people knowing you and you become, I always tell my students three things, authenticity, vulnerability, and consistency. If you have those three things included, people are going to gravitate to who they resonate with. Yeah, that's um, so it's true. Huge. Yeah. yeah. And I agree with the platform choice because, I mean, they're only expansive. Yeah. You know, they're now like over Instagram. Um, yeah. And just, it's amazing to see, like now is the time of Facebook Live, yeah. of ads that go to that because the ads are really cheap right now. Yeah. And, you know, because they're trying to encourage people to use the platform, eventually it may change and shift. Right. But right. this is the time that it's like you get the most reach for your message. Yes. And, and possibly leads into your business. Yeah, totally. And I think that that's such a good point and something that we've learned and we've utilized now that we've been in business is ride the wave of what is trending, not to just uh, take action and then move, but build up your presence with what's working for other people. Because if it's working for other people, it will work for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we chose YouTube in the beginning, because it was working for a lot of people we were following. So we repeated the process and put our own spin on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing with Facebook. I mean, utilize, ride the wave of what's hot and what's working, and then continue to build out on your other platforms once you get one of them functioning and thriving. Mm hmm. That's awesome. So early on, you picked a specialty. Yes. And it was video marketing. Yes. So, you know, I'm going to ask to pick your brain about <laughs> <laughs> how to create killer videos that attract that many leads and like kind of the breakdown of what you guys use for a formula so that people yeah. can get some success. Sure. So the formula that we've used and we actually still use, it changes up a little bit with Facebook live streaming. There's obviously more engagement in live streaming now. However, the formula is really the same. Uh, first step is a quick introduction. Mm -hmm. um, and then second step is telling them what to expect on your video. Huge. Um, one of the biggest things I can tell you when it comes to doing video is it has to be about them. Most people get on video, freak out, and just start talking about themselves and their struggles and all of that. Um, what I like to do is, actually, I'll go back and I'll start from the beginning even before we hit record. So I always want to know what my offer is, what I'm going to be recommending out. Um, so it could be a free Zoom call. It could be um, if you have like a free giveaway or a checklist. It could be a webinar that they registrate. Uh, they register for. It could be a blog post that you send them to. I always know where I'm going to be sending people mm -hmm. because that's how I create my value. I think a lot of people when it comes to video have difficulty because they're not quite sure where to send people and how to create some sort of tip or training that would help them get to their offer. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a disservice if you don't recommend out something at the end of your videos because the people have watched um, and they want to obviously know more people want to get quicker faster results and whatever it is And so offering out something of help is always valuable So that's the first part and then I create the whole video training around this formula. It's um, Depending on the on, upon the platform. So with Facebook I do an interruption. So I ask a question um, I make a statement so it might be something like um, if you're doing video and you're not getting leads you're missing something from this formula or, um, you know, if you're struggling to lose that baby weight, it might be because of one of these tips that I have to share with you inside of this video. So I'll do a little interruption. Um, 
or you can just start with an introduction, real simple. Like for example, hey, my name is Kate. I'm coming to you here from Issaquah, Washington. And all I wanna do is just build up that relationship with people. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I do is I share what they should expect on this, um, on this video, what I'm going to be sharing with them. And, um, and then the next piece is, this is what I do. And this is what I do with Facebook. Um, we didn't do this as much with YouTube and I actually wish that we had, um, I give a call to action in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is because the attention span of a human being is eight seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> it has been studied um, and there's, there's data on it that it is eight seconds long. So within the first 10 to 15 seconds, I always say, and hey, by the way, if you're looking for blank, 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 just click the link that's in this post or go down. I'm going to post it in the comments section. Head on over there and you can get your free giveaway or you can hop on a Zoom call with me and we'll talk about X, Y, Z. Awesome. Yeah, so we do that because a lot of people will pop on and pop off if they don't know you. Mm -hmm. The next thing is that providing value. So the majority of the video is providing value. A um, couple of tips that I can give you on this. We tend to want to over deliver and it actually makes it cumbersome for your viewer. Um, so I know in the beginning for me, I wanted to give seven tips on you know how to generate leads and I want to talk about Facebook and YouTube and all that kind of stuff totally overwhelms your viewer. Um, so what I say is three max. Um, and typically now I will just do one tip and I'll do one tip and I'll break them down into sub tips or subcategories. And I'll actually do some extensive teaching on it. Um, I'll give examples. I'll do a ton of stuff. Typically I have a whiteboard and I'm writing on my whiteboard and all of those things especially if you're somebody that's like, well, I'm new to the business. I don't really know what to teach and train on. Do what you're learning right now. And that's what I did is a lot of our topics were on things that I was currently learning uh, that I learned the day before and I would reteach it with my own spin to it and just mm -hmm. break down that tip. So after you share value and that should be like the majority of your video. Um, then the next step is to address Two different things. It's either a problem or that you just scratch the surface with what you shared inside of this video. And so, and so you address either a problem or the, or the fact that you covered all of this, but there's really three other steps that you should do in order to be really successful with the strategy. And then you give a call to action where you're basically telling them to go to your blog or your webinar or your free giveaway or hop on a Zoom call with you and then let them know what they're gonna get over mm -hmm. there and give them that future of when they land on that page, here's what they're gonna be able to do and how they're gonna be able to get more information from you. The last thing that I do is I, I ask for engagement, especially on social media now, people are there to engage with, their, with other people and they love to help and they love to give opinions <laughs> and so, <laughs> At the end, what I say is, hey, and if you've got value, I've got one question for you. What do you think is? And then I fill in that blank with whatever the content topic was. Um, that question is so powerful because people don't want to admit their struggles. Um, and so when you phrase it as what do you think is, it allows them to share their opinion, which is probably describing what they're struggling with or what they're excited about or what they've seen other people struggle with without them having to say, I'm having a really hard time with X. Nobody wants to show that on social media. And so then that's it. And there's that engagement part. So that engagement part creates people commenting. And then it also allows people to start tagging and sharing. Um, and it also makes it feel like, especially when you drop that link or drop that call to action in the beginning of the video, it doesn't feel pitchy because everything else is so highly valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that because um, just even about the last point about what do you think about, mm. it's just asking an opinion um, yep. and people are scared to be vulnerable, especially on social media, especially if they're supposed to be viewed as a leader. Yep. Um, you know, there's different uh, inhibiting factors of them not wanting to share you know, their reality at the time and say like, Hey, I'm raising my hand. I need help with this. Exactly. Um, but really you just asking their opinion. So you would recommend 
your call to action be at two places in the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Two places. Yeah. Get the, get the people that are going to take action fast anyways at the beginning. And then mm -hmm. at the end, um, the end, make sure that you have it. It's not a hard call to action. It's just kind of a quick one. It's, I like to do them now as like a, Oh, by the way. And Hey, if you're looking for more information on X, here's what you need to do. Versus mm -hmm. like when I first started, it was go click on this link. Now you need to go enter <laughs> your information. People are so immune to that, that it's, they just want you to be normal and natural. So if you're like, Hey, I have another way that I could help you. Um, you can either take me up on it or not, not a big deal, but mm -hmm. head on over here. So that's what I recommend. Yeah, that's yep. great advice. Yeah. Um, so you pretty much quantified learning out loud. Really, yeah. um, people get frozen sometimes because they're like, well, I don't have anything to teach. I'm not an expert at it. I'm still learning myself. Yep. And what you did is really like maybe take a course on it or a chunk of a book that you read yep. and learned out loud. And the next day you taught on it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, it's such a good point. What, uh, one of the best tips that I got on how I used to get my content topics in the beginning were from two places, well, actually three places. One place was obviously if I was at a live event and I was taking a ton of notes, um, almost every single bullet could have been a potential training. Um, and then I would get them from courses that I was going through or calls that I was on with my team um, or through other leaders. And then the other place that I got it from, which was really cool, um, and I can't remember who gave me this recommendation, but I used to go to Barnes and Noble and I would go to the business section and check out, you know, at that point in time, it was social media. And I'm sure the, the books I was looking at were pretty hilarious. <laughs> However, they had table of contents. And so I would literally just go through the table of contents. I would take a picture on my phone and I would have like eight or nine new content topics that I could talk about. Mm -hmm. and, because I knew if they were in those books and they were about business or they're about social media, there had to be something that was there that I could teach and train on. Um, the other cool part about the engagement piece of using a video and if people start commenting what they think, that's your next training. Um, so whatever they're struggling with, find the solution to help them not struggle. And that there becomes a piece of content. And that's amazing because people, like you asked a question, they answered it and now you're giving them a solution. It's like that instant connector. Mm, I love that because a lot of people make the mistake. A lot of entrepreneurs make the mistake of, um, you know, just developing this amazing blinged out product of like, yeah. it might be education on how to do a webinar. It might be education on how to create an e-product but none of their audience wants that. Right. And then they're like, oh my God, I've like way over delivered. I spent six months making it. Mm -hmm. I know it's just going to like fly off the shelves, so to speak, but it's uh, right. <laughs> digitally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's just like, you know, I've even been guilty of that. Like in the yeah. fitness business, um, developing a product and I, it was way over delivered. Yep. But the audience that I had at the time, it wasn't their goal set, you know? Right. And so it wasn't listening enough to, or even maybe asking the right questions. So that question at the end of every video is so important and such yeah. a key piece from you. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Definitely. Anything that can, uh, can help people get bigger and better results, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you teach on this topic quite often of how to use video for, you know, marketing, but you also do teach about webinars and that type mm -hmm. of thing. So it's really using video in a different way. Um, totally. Do you typically have people do webinars like using their screen or kind of doing a live like mm -hmm. this? Yeah, so what I recommend, um, and webinars has probably been the most lucrative strategy um, that we've had inside of our business. Um, especially like when we really took it to multiple six figures and now obviously on to seven, um, webinars is a big element of that. Cause it just mm -hmm. makes, it makes perfect sense when you think about it of instead of individually reaching out to one person at a time, taking a mass group of people. I mean, there's a reason that home parties work, right? 
You right. take a mass group of people and you put them all in one space at one time and you deliver a presentation. Um, mm -hmm. And you can close multiple people at one time. So that's what we do with webinars. Um, I recommend to my students, whatever is the least path of resistance for you, you do it. Mm -hmm. And so for some of the people that I work with, they actually do need to share their screen. They do live demonstrations. Some of them actually are doing kind of calls like this where they have a product. That they have to physically show people how to utilize it. And they kind of create it like a little party where they invite people and they get people to register and people show up and it's them and they're doing their live demonstrations. They're talking about all the benefits of their product. They're sharing their story. Um, and then they have a way for people to get access to buy. Um, and for some people, that's the least path of resistance. For other people, um, especially if you're creating your own product, and this is how we started, is I recommend creating the offer for the product and then marketing it on a webinar. And I do it through PowerPoint slides because for me, um, I think that that's the most stimulating for people long term. And it's something where I don't have to get ready to show up and present. I can present in my PJs and, right. and it works. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to creating a product, I learned um, having a minimum viable product available and getting a basic, it's basically like doing a test where you're doing this webinar and you're testing to see if your audience wants it. And the cool part is, is that if you get buyers, you have a proof of concept and you have at least, you know, one module or one training available. Mm -hmm. If you don't get buyers, you can figure out what you need to tweak for the offer. Maybe like you said, it's something that's just not a fit for them. It's not meeting them with where they're at. And if it, and, and it might need to be a whole new product, or it could just be that the offer really wasn't as enticing as it needs to be. And, um, and so then you just tweak that, but you haven't spent six months creating a product that nobody wants. Right. So that's the biggest thing. Yeah. So slides are, or video, um, totally just depends on what will put people into action versus having them be held back. We had one student who closed a couple of hundred dollars in sales by doing it through Facebook live. His zoom broke down <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't know what to do. So he just hopped on Facebook live and, ran his webinar and ended up closing, you know, a, a couple of sales and just said, all right, well, I guess it's just, you adapt from what's not working and you make it work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's great. That's a great That's experience cool. because, you know, it could, everybody's afraid of technology at first, right? Oh, yeah. You Definitely. know, and that's, yeah, I know me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was petrified. I actually, and this is no joke. I knew how to copy paste. I knew how to respond to emails and write emails. And that was probably it. I had someone else create my Facebook profile. I was not interested in that. Um, I didn't even know how to use Excel, anything, um, you know, mm -hmm. any kind of like zoom chat like this was not on my radar. And so it's just about once I viewed it as another vehicle to connect with more people, I got interested. Versus mm -hmm. letting it consume, like if I touch a button and it, you know, messes up, <laughs> I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna break it. Versus I'm gonna test it out and see what works. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's awesome. Yeah. Um. So basically, what platform would you instruct your student to try to, you know, invite people to their web class? Is it sure. Facebook? Is it, um, would you actually have them do ads towards it? Yeah. And um, you've recently had a couple of big launches yourself. So yeah. take us through that. Yeah, sure. So for the beginner, what I've recommended um, is that, and in one of our courses, we have like a webinar course that walks them through. I like to think of it as we call it like the easy invite formula. So for somebody who's never done it before and might be like marketing their business on their personal page, they don't really have everything else set up yet, like a, a business fan page or anything. Um, number one, I think that again, Facebook is the best way to get the word out. So what I've had quite a few students do is, is almost like an announcement post where they set a date. They mark a date, which number one, that's holding them accountable. And then the second piece is they announce it on Facebook. They say, you know, I'm so excited. I'm going to be hosting an online event on, and our favorite way to teach people on how to create like a big promise of what will be uncovered on a webinar is how to blank without blank. And so you insert, you know, how to um, pain and struggle so you can 
or uh, how to dream and desire so then you can not have to do it with a pain and struggle. So it would be like how to lose the next 15 pounds in seven days without having to work out, things mm-hmm. like that. Or how to get create um, healthy, young-looking skin without um, major injections and plastic surgery. And so they literally just kind of put in the title of what they're going to be covering. And then they would say, if you want to be kept in the loop, comment below, message me, and I'll hook you up with the details. And that's it. And then they literally go through um, anybody that says message me, and they private message them, and they start the connection and the interaction. And the cool part that I taught our students was when they're private messaging them, the first response is, thanks so much for reaching out. I saw that you wanted to know more about the, um, the, web, the training I'm going to be doing. I'll keep you updated when the link becomes available. Just curious, though, what got you interested? Mm -hmm. And what that does is that just opens up a whole thing for people to um, share a pain or struggle that they're currently having or a dream and desire that they want. So when you're crafting out your webinar at that time, it just makes it something that um, is a no brainer for you to be able to speak to your people. And you get to make sure that whatever you're offering is in alignment with what they want. So that's for anybody that's really kind of not done advertising before or is just starting out. And we've had a couple of students who have done that gotten about 15 people to 15 to 20 people to register about 10 people to show up and they've closed between one or two sales on their training. So it can be really valuable even if you don't have like a big team or a big list. That's Um, great. Yeah, it's great. And then with regards to advertising, definitely suggest um, you do it through two different ways. So Facebook ads and the way that I like to do it is basically um, for me, it's, it's story based. And so like a lot of our webinars, if it's through a video marketing product that we're going to be selling, it was, you know, and this is true. It took me 12 months to record my first video and, and I share that and I share it. It's brutally, brutally honest. And I said, you know, after, um, I did everything wrong, I learned five steps and I'm going to share them with you on this training. Click here to register. I keep it really, really simple. Mm -hmm. Um, the other great way to promote and do it through advertising is Facebook live. You make the announcement that you're going to be doing it, telling people to comment in, and then you can actually boost that post, add in like $10, and you can get mass exposure to different people, and that's how you can get some registrants. So those would be my biggest suggestions, um, is making like an announcement post, doing a Facebook Live, or setting up just a simple advertisement um, to get people to know you a little bit better to register for the webinar. Mm -hmm. Um, And then with regards to launches, right? You wanted to know a little bit about launches? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had an awesome launch, you know, a couple of launches with these yeah. products that you're telling us about as well as your event this year. So yes. You know, you um have obviously figured out a launch system. Yeah. So share it. So um when it comes to launching a product or a service, this is kind of how we do and we function for everything. Is we do an initial launch through a webinar training, like I was talking about earlier, where it's you have a product that's not really created yet, you're gonna create it when you have your buyers, you're gonna do it live, you're gonna release all the different trainings. Um, And what that allows is for two things. Um, So that's how we always do it. We always kickstart it off with some sort of mini launch or some sort of, you know, it's here, this is the course we're gonna be doing. And it does two things. Number one, it gets testimonials because you'll have people taking action. Um, And I position it like that. And number two, it allows you to build out a product and service that other people are chiming in on, on what they like, what they, you know, what they don't like. And I'm, I want to hear that stuff. I want to hear what they think is valuable because sometimes the most little minimal things, even just like a PDF checklist is like changes everything for them. Um, or I think one of them was like, we had a 14 day action plan on how you can get results with, um, webinars and people loved that bonus. So, Mm -hmm. so that's how we initially launch. And then what we do is we do kind of a second big launch. Like once the product is done, we've gotten some testimonials. We actually go and we reach out to other affiliates. So we reach out to other people we know or people that potentially might need our product or service and ask them if they would, if they would be a part of our launch of our, of our product of it going mainstream to the public. And, um, we followed a very specific formula. We've done it every time and it's hasn't failed us yet. Um, we give three pre-training videos Mm -hmm. and then the fourth video is a sales page to the release of the product. And the pre-training videos are highly, highly valuable videos. 
So it literally could walk people through the steps of how to take action with whatever the product or service is. Um, but it gets people ramped up, excited. It creates goodwill, uh, trust in you, relationship building. And then on that, you know, release day, people are excited to buy your product versus, versus like they just get kind of like a free checklist or a free giveaway and then it's, there's your product. This is a way to kind of ramp up um, the excitement. And then what we'll do during that launch time is we'll do webinars with affiliates or we'll do um, webinars for you know everybody that wants to promote and and then market out to their people um, our product or service and one great tip when it comes to launches that we did this year that made a huge impact was we did a mini promotional contest in between our launch time so the launch for this course it was our webinar course was uh, just about 11 days long which is pretty long mm -hmm. So in the middle, when we know that there was like a little bit of a slowdown in, in results and people investing in the product, we created some extra bonuses. And if you invested through these three days, you would get X, Y, and Z. And it created a major pop in sales and an increase in revenue. And it allowed our sales to continually stay. Mm -hmm. um, and that just like made a huge impact, made a huge impact. Um, the one other thing I'll tell you about the reason that I know that launch did really, really well is it's how we positioned our product. Um, so our product was not a webinar course. <laughs> because um, Most people do not want to do webinars and they're afraid to present. And there's a lot of different objections that happen. So what we did is when we created our course, we, we really spoke about the benefit of what they would get. So it was called the 60 minute enrollment method. And so it was all about like how to get a mass surge of leads and sales in your business. So we spoke directly to what they thought that they needed and they wanted. And then we delivered it in the vehicle that we know will produce results for them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was so different because we've done other launches that haven't done as well. And it's because we, again, tried to deliver a product and make it, um, make it too generic where we were letting people decide ahead of time whether they would want it or not. So mm -hmm. we created a lot of curiosity and buzz that way. Um, so that's product launches. Um, so the biggest thing I would say is that always do a test run. Um, mm -hmm. cause you're just, you're going to get either raving reviews or you're going to know what you need to fix. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when it comes to affiliates, how to attract good affiliates is produce results, not just for yourself, but for others. And mm -hmm. that's a great way to make networking connections is when you stick around with people and you help others, they will help you in return. Um, so that's what's allowed us to be able to network and, um, and have amazing affiliates and be amazing affiliates for other people. Um, with regards to the live event, so the live event was our first live event ever. We had co-hosted an event uh, with another couple the year before and just really wanted to take the next step in our business. Um, so what I can tell you about live events are a couple of different things. Um, it is not just a three-day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it is a whole new part of your business. And so just preparing that, you know, 90 days ahead of time, it's really going to be your main focus um, is, is huge. Uh, what we also did is we strategically put a launch right before we were going to be doing our live event because we knew that that would, number one, create a quick bump in revenue. And so we could focus in on creating a very, very strong live event. Um, the tips I can give you on, on live events are two things. Number one, reach out to the people that you know the best that would want to be interested in going and give them a heads up, especially if they're flying in. Um, the second way we got a big influx of attendees was actually lo uh, targeting locally. Mm -hmm. so it was reaching out to our customer base, reaching out to people that, were in that area, a lot of them that we didn't even know, but we just recommended this live event. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it gets to the live event, I think the biggest thing that I can say is, and this was the advice that I got um, actually from one of our coaches during the live event, Ray Higgin, um, worked with him extensively through creating this event, um, was no matter what happens that weekend, no matter how many people show up, you are there to serve those people. Mm -hmm. And because it doesn't matter if there's a hundred people in the room, if there's 25, if there's seven, it is what it is in a good way. And your job is to impact those people. Um, a lot of people focus on the results and the outcome. 
versus focusing in on over delivering, providing so much value and making sincere connections with people and just voicing general care and concern um, is what really made a huge impact. I know in our, um, in our live event. And, uh, and then we offered out a way for them to continue to work further with us and almost did right under uh, half a million in sales um, first month of 2017. So pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> really powerful. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think to your point, um, no matter who shows up, no yeah. matter if it's offline or online, yeah, it's true. over delivering, you know, yes. um, if you can out teach your competitors, if you can just give that value, then that person is going to trust you in yeah. a way that you can't beat anywhere else. So, yeah, no, it's so, that's so true. And I think the people that consistently show up and continue to show up, um, will be the ones that will win it um, for the long game, totally. Mm -hmm. um, and it just makes sense. So even if your first Facebook Live, no one's watching, do them anyway. My first webinars, I started running webinars and I was presenting to no one um, for quite a for quite an, a certain amount of time. However, I learned the craft and I learned the skill set of what I needed to do. And I actually got rid of all of the terrible webinars that I probably would have hosted. <laughs> If people were there. And so, yeah, for, I mean, anybody that's on here where you feel like you're not getting people to respond on your Facebook lives, you're hosting trainings and people aren't showing up, you're making calls and people aren't calling you back. Um, the longer you stick around and the more you think about just totally over delivering and providing that value to people, um, mm -hmm. you will stand out because most people won't go that extra mile. Yeah. I love that because um, it's easy to think that, you see the people that are doing it really well and yeah. you're like, Oh, well they just have some talent. I don't, right. you know, but you actually delivered the webinar even though nobody was there and a lot yeah. of people would not do that. So wow. it's being willing to do the things that most people won't. Right. Right. Very, very true. Yeah. So you gave yourself the chance to bomb it, practice, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> trip over your words. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Listen to the dog bark. You're yep. like, oh man. <laughs> and you just figure it out. You know, it all falls into place. It's like building um, the airplane in the air and you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's just allowing yourself to do it and knowing that everyone at some point started from scratch. And so no one was born with these skill sets. And so everyone had to learn somewhere. It's just the ones that continually show up. Yeah. And yeah. actually, you're living proof of how much can change in one year yeah. just based on a difference of intention. You know, like you were saying, you didn't really at the one summit, you didn't really gain that much more education. You already had the knowledge, but it just was an application. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's the biggest thing that I would say for a lot of you that are listening and watching is that, there's a very good chance, even if you're new, that you already have enough to start moving forward, take action and get results. It's just making that choice of doing it no matter and not letting ego get in the way. Um, that was a huge thing for me in the beginning is what will people think? They're going to see me on a video and, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing, all that kind of stuff. And, and what I know is that somebody needs you right now. Like somebody needs you that isn't going to resonate with me. That's not going to resonate with Lisa. And, and they need you now. And you not taking action is stopping them from moving forward in their life. And I, uh, I, when, when I realized that, that's what changed things for me was like, oh, it's not just impacting me. And it's not just about me. All the reasons I don't do things right now are about me. I need to shift it to be about other people. Yeah, I love that because we can just get so caught up in our own head yeah. and in our own process and in our own ego. Um, you know, I was on a accountability call with mm -hmm. one of my teammates today and I said, you know, even on your chicken list, I want you to write down their name and yeah. the reason why you're hesitating calling, what you think they're going to think about you. I want yep. you to write that beside their name and say, I accept myself anyway. Hmm. And, you know, 
And, and then I said further that and say, and I still have something to help them with. Yeah. Because if we can turn it to about that, and that's exactly what you're saying is that you have a gift, you have something that changes people's lives. Just get past yourself enough to share it. Exactly. It's so true. And I would say that probably is one of the most powerful things when you're able to do that. Um, yeah, you might get people to say no right now, whatever. However, I can tell you is that I have people reaching out to me now that were absolute doubters um, that, you know, made not made fun, but just wanted to keep me in a safe place mm -hmm. um, and are now reaching out saying, I, I wish I could travel as much as you. Um, you know, I, what are you doing exactly? Um, I'm so proud of you. I'm so impressed by you. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes other people are just waiting for you to step up. Yeah. Really. And, and see you succeed and see you thrive um, because it's, it's really just makes a difference. It really makes a difference in other people's lives knowing that you're doing something that's bigger and better. Not everyone's going to like it. However, this is all about like, how you see yourself being the biggest impact that you can be. Mm -hmm. yep. Very powerful note to end on. Thank you <laughs> so much for just all of the nuggets that you shared today. I will include a link on the page on the website to link to you. What's the, what's the easiest way for people to get in touch with you if they want to know more about what you offer yep. um, more from you? Yeah, sure. So I think the best way to get in touch with me would be on our blog. So if you just go to katemcshay.com, super simple, um, that'll give you extra training that we have. And then again, anything um, that we have to offer and ways to get in contact with us. That sounds amazing. So I'll link to that. And thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me and just appreciate being able to share value with your people.